last class we were talking about the switching frequency variation uh, for a hysteresis current controller for, for a fixed delta I band. So, if you see here, here the situ frequency F is equal to Fm into 1 minus m square by 2 plus m square by 2 cos 2 omega t. This m is the modulation index. So, the switching frequency varies around a DC value. So, let us draw how it looks. Let us go to the next page. This is our x axis and this is our AC waveform. Approximately I am drawing. This is the AC waveform, that is a back EMF waveform. That is here AC max, let us say this is equal to m into EDC by 2. Now, with respect to this one, how the switching frequency varies? If you see here, when m into VDC by 2 is equal to 0, so let us write down the, the switching frequency uh, equation that is equal to F is equal to Fm into 1 minus m square by 2 plus m square by 2 cos 2 omega t. Okay. So, here when uh, the bike EMF is 0, we will have the maximum voltage. So, if you see here maximum frequency sorry. So, if you write down our frequency with respect to this one, it will be like this. Let us draw down with a different color. So, I will draw like this. This is our exercise for the switching frequency variation. So, here if you see here, two times it varies, switching frequency varies. So, this is our omega t. See, when back EMF is 0, you will have the maximum switching frequency. Then the back EMF is here, you will have the minimum, minimum switching frequency. So, it will go like this. This is two times. Okay. This is F maximum. This is F minimum and this is F average. So, switching frequency varies. This is for a one phase. Now, this switching now to de, uh, design the uh, hysteresis controller to avoid the high frequency switching. That means, if you use a IGBT or a transistor or a thyristor. So, depending on that devices, there is a maximum with which we can turn on and turn off the device. So, usually in hysteresis controller, you can decide the hysteresis, uh, control, uh, hysteresis band based on the maximum switching frequency. Okay. Now, this is so far we have discussed the switching frequency variation with respect to a single phase. Now, let us take for a three phase. Three phase case if you see here, this will vary. The EC maximum vary with 120, 120 degree. Okay. This is B, B phase, then the C phase will be, sorry, something like this it will go. So, the maximum point for each phase, that is E C is maximum, so that the minimum switching frequency happens at various points, at uh, each phase happens at different points. 
So, for a pre phase system, this is our A, this is our B, and this is our C. I A plus I B plus A, let us say B C. Here, I A plus I B plus I C is equal to 0. Okay. Now, in this case, there is a problem. Even though individually we have put hysteresis band, the phase which has the maximum back EMF maximum back EMF will have the minimum switching frequency. What is mean by this one? So, I A plus I B plus I C is 0, the current in the and, and the other two phases which have which have lesser back EMF, the current uh, changes will be much faster than the current in the uh, phase where you have the uh, switching frequency is minimum. So, the current variation, so here if you see here. the current variation that is the ripple or the current ripple in a phase with minimum switching frequency. minimum switching frequency will be decided by the other two phases because IA plus IB will be 0. So, what is the problem with this one? So, sometimes in a phase the current because of the three phase operation and the current in a phase because of this condition IA plus IB plus IC equal to 0 that means current in a phase the instantaneous current in a phase depends on the other two phases. So, even though we have designed our uh, hysteresis controller so that the current uh, has to be within the hysteresis band, sometimes overshoot can happen. Sometimes in a phase, phase with the minimum switching frequency, that means I can write it down. The phase which has the minimum minimum switching frequency. This is because the instantaneous amplitude of the vacuum of is maximum here. Will experience sometimes Some, not always, sometimes current overshoot the peak of which can go a maximum of 2 h. If the history band is h, it can go up to a maximum of 2 h. Uh, so, or we can say the current overshoot that means it can experience current load that means current ripple go beyond the hysteresis limit. This is maybe we can explain like this. 
a simple way of explanation like this. Let us say this is the phase current we want. I will put the hysteresis bond like this. I have enlarged it for clarity. Now let us take the fast acting uh, current controllers. That means the phase in which the uh, switch frequency is higher or the vacuum of is lower. Let us say in let us say this is A phase and B phase and C phase the currents are increasing like this. So let us say B phase the current is increasing like this, C phase also current is increasing like this, okay. Let us say this is IB, this is IC, okay. In C phase the current will be IA plus IB plus IC, IA will be equal to minus of IB plus IC because IA plus IB plus IC equal to 0. So, so in C phase, so in A phase, the current will be first of all already reached the let us say uh, in, in this current has already suppose if it is here. Current, uh, current must have already reached somewhere here because some of these two. Now because it is slow acting, now again this is going in this direction. So when it reaches here, I A plus I B has to be 0, so it may go out of this one and again come back. So this can happen. This can, this is also due to a reason the inverter zero states are not properly, properly utilized in, uh, in, uh, uh, in the hysteresis controller. What is mean by zero state? Let us see. This is our A phase, this is our B phase, this is our C phase. So this is our minus A, minus B, minus C. So here we are giving the hysteresis limit along the A, B, C. So along the A phase let the hysteresis part is here, that is the positive negative. So C it will be here, equal width. B it will be here. So if you expand this one, the hysteresis limit for the combined three phase system will be like this, okay. This is the limit, the combined ABC system has to be within this one. Now, so ABC phases, when the top switch is on, let us say we are taking uh, we are taking the uh, notation as 1 and bottom switch we are taking as 0. So there are 3 switches, so we, we can have 8 conditions, either all are, all are 0, all the top one is on, all the bottom one, bottom one is on depend on the current or we can also have 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0 and this one. So when any of these condition happens, so this demands 1, 1, 1, that is all the top switch is on. That means in an inverter, all the top switches are on. So what is mean by that one? All the three terminals are ABC phases are short circuited here. So we lose control. So here inverter is in a zero, even though 1 1 is inverter is in a zero state. So current we lose control. So this will make sometimes the current in this combined three phase boundary. See, the, we are extending the hysteresis boundary during inverter zero state. Zero state, not only one, these are zero also, this is also a zero state where 
inverter terminals are shorted to either to the upper limb or to the bottom. This is so these are called inverter zero states. zero states. So, during this portion let us take 1 1 1, we want the current increase in all the phases according to history's controller, but the limbs are short circuited, the DC link is inverter is isolated from the motor. So, we lose control. So, in the such cases current can exceed the boundary and when again goes out of this is the boundary limit for all the three phases. So, whenever zero state happens sometimes we lose control and current will go outside the boundary and whenever touches here when the next switch is turned on or off then only again it will bring back the current to inside. So, this is because of the, uh, the current in the three phase with the neutral isolated uh, loads the current in are not independent of each other currents in a phase depends on the current in other two phases. That also means the switching frequency in a, can, uh, can in a phase also depends on the switching frequency in the other two phases or in other words the uh, current in a um, phase which has low switching frequency that is maximum back EMF will be decided by the current in the other two phases. So, momentarily we will be losing control and current can go outside the boundary and maximum of two times also it can go. Okay. So, this is called sometimes, sometimes that means if you observe the current, if you observe the current in a hysteresis controller, okay. depending on the where the maximum uh, biochem is there, some current will be going like this, sometimes it can go and come back like this. So, double this can happen. So, we may think we lose control, yes we lose control not because of our uh, fault or our history is controlled because of the dependency of the three phase currents that means any phase current I A plus I B plus I C equal to 0. So, so, instantaneous value of a current in a phase depends on the other two. Okay, this is one thing, this is called overshoot. Then current history is controller with the fixed band, there is another problem that is called limit cycle operation. Sometimes the band will be switched with very high switching frequency, limit cycle. This is because again let us go back to the ABC diagram, A, B, this is C and we told from the three phases each limb either the pole can be top connected to the top when the top switch is on connected to the bottom. So, two states are possible for, for a limb and there are three phases. So, totally 2 raised to 3, 8 states combined states are possible. So, depending on the switching states let us take 0, 0, 0, all the bottom switches are on. Then 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, then 0, 1 1, this is our A phase, B phase, C phase. Then 1 0 0, 1 0 1, 1 1 0, 1 1. So, these two are called 0 states, where during this period we lose control. That means, inverter all the three, uh, all the phases are shorted to either to the top when the 1 1 is on or to the bottom DC link. So, we lose control. Now, so if you take the combined three, these are this shows the according to the position ABC, these are particular vectors. So, let us say 1 0 0, that means A, B, A phase is 1, B phase are 0 0, that means this will be the 1 0 0. Then, where will be this will be B phase 0 1 0 that is that is a voltage vector the combined three phase the voltage vector will be along this direction 
then this is 0, 0, 1, okay. So this sort F A C is 1. Now in that case, which will be, what is this one? That is C phi C is negative. So in all these regions, see the component of A phase along this one, component of this one will be always positive. C phi C is negative. So C phi C is negative. So this will be 1, 1, 0. Now opposite to this one, this is 0, 0, 1, 0, this will be 1, 0, 1. That means in all this direction, the current along the ABC, AB, uh, the vector, the voltage vector along the ABC, A and C axis will be positive, B will be 0. Now negative of C will be 0, 1, 1. So we have taken all the 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1 we have taken, 1, 1, 0 we have taken, 0, 1, 1. So 0, 0, short circuited means the all the three phases are short circuit that means the combined vector is 0. So these are 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, okay. Now if you see a combined system, the back EMF, back EMF, the combined three phase ABC, uh, not the individual ABC, combined system will have a, for a sinusoid relaxation, it will have a magnitude of Vm and it will be tracing a circle with the uniform velocity, that is the back EMF, okay. Now for low back EMF, that means back EMF is very small for, is for a motor drive, low speed operation, then Vm is very small somewhere here. Then the current error direction, see when the back EMF is there, when 1, 1, 1 is 0, the current error di direction will be the difference of these two vectors, that is either it can be here when this is here, it can be in this direction. So when Vm is 0, if 1, 0, 0 is switched, the current direction will be in this direction. So for lower uh, back of voltages, so let us draw the, let us draw our hysteresis band with the blue. See this is our hysteresis band, A phase positive or negative, B phase it is here. No, the C phase negativity is here, B phase negativity is here, then C phase, okay, because this is this one here. So this is a hexagon, this way it goes. So when back MF is 0, the current error direction, whenever all these, active, these we call all these 6 are called active vectors, these 2 are 0 vectors. Whenever the active vectors are switched, the current direction will be along the axis, BM is 0. So when it happens, see when 1, 1, 0 is switched, it will go like this, okay. Then so that means it will go from here to here. The moment it is touched here, one, so it will go to 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0 means again it will go like this, then it will go like this, so it will come like this. So it will make 6, okay, the 6, uh, okay, from here it will go like this, then there is another one. 6 will be there. So in a cycle of operation, it will make for a, uh, it will make 6 jumps equal to our hysteresis band. This is called, because back MF is 0. So when 1, 1, 0 is there, it will be like this. The moment when a touch here, 1, 1, 0 is there. We are touching here. So 1, 1, 0, it will go like this. Then 0, 1, 0, it will go like this. Then 0, 1, 1, it will come along this direction. Then 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1 in this direction, then 1, 0, 1, it will come like this. This. So the current error direction for this one, it will be 1, 0, 0, current error, this will be 1, 1, 0, whenever our back MF is 0, then this will be 0, 1, 0, then 0, 1, 1 in this direction, then 0, 0, 1, then 1, 0, 1. So current ripple, the combined system current ripple will go like this in all the three phases together. So it will make 6 passes and come to a starting point. So this distance depend on the our history is band, this is equal to h. So we will make total distance is 6 such and if you see this length, you see our DC link voltage, 
So, 1 0 0 we are taking. So, let us say when the 1 is switched on it is plus V D C by 2, when the 0 0 are minus V D C by 2. So, this length is V D C. So, you have L into delta I by D T is equal to V D C. Okay. What is the delta I distance travelled? Distance travelled is equal to 6 such current ripple in anyway. So, L into 6 such by delta T is equal to V D C. Okay. So, from this one 1 by delta T is equal to frequency of this is equal to V D C by 6 H into L. So, L is the leakage inductance of the per phase machine. So, depending on this L during uh, my KMF is 0, high frequency switching will, is there, will be there in the you can observe in the current hysteresis band. So, this is called limit size. This during only the my KMF, my KMF factor is 0. So, you can sometimes you can see this type of high frequency switching that it will go to. So, what it shows for a three phase machine with uh, uh, not independent control because for ABC system with the neutral is disconnected. The currents are the current in a phase is depending on the current in other two phases. So, this can create sometimes the control the variation in uh, one phase the current variation can dep uh, depends on the current variation other two phases where the switching frequency is higher. So, this can lead to overshoots that means current can sometimes come out of the hysteresis band. Also, when the back MF is 0 because of the combined effect current will make a high frequency circulation like this combined cur current effect. So, this will result in high frequency switching in individual phases this is called limit cycle operation. Now, but current hysteresis controller is very easy to implement you sense the current you have a reference current. So, current history is controller how the controller will be it is very easy to implement. So, you have a reference current I reference these are sinusoidal current okay. this you compare with a with our feedback current I feedback this you give to our hysteresis comparator this is our H and whenever the hysteresis comparator uh, touches the uh, top band you switch the bottom devices whenever it touches the lower band it uh, switch on the top device for each uh, phase. So, it is very easy to implement and it has fast dynamics. Fast dynamics means let us see our current reference is like this it is going steady state operation. So, current is within the hysteresis band it goes there. Now, at this point due to some control action let us see frequency is the same the current reference has gone here. So, what happens along with our current reference our hysteresis also move. Now, according to this one now our current reference is below the hysteresis band. So, now the top switch will be immediately on current will quickly rise then, then there onwards again it will go to the SS band. So, this has fast dynamics. So, it is initially used in uh, high performance drives such as vector control drive applications we will talk about the vector control uh, drive application later. So, hysteresis controllers sir, initially preferred high dynamic control applications, controlled drive applications. This is used, but the problem is there is a wide switching frequency variation is there. So, the hysteresis spectrum the current harmonic spectrum not like our uh, our sine triangle PWM with the harmonics 
shifted uh, uh, centered at the high order harmonic centered at the FC and FM. Since the switching frequency variation is there, we can have all sort of spectrum. A distributed spectrum will be there. Sometimes we can see for various operation subharmonics also. That means frequency below the so as the switching frequency comes lower, the side bands can be shifted to the lower side of the fundamental. So it can also create subharmonics. So the moment subharmonics means motor drives, it can create torque pulsations. Also losses, harmonic losses. So these are some of the problem. But it is very easy to implement. That means hysteresis controller is very easy to implement, very simple to implement, that is very important. Okay. So there are many uh, works related to switching frequency variation control of uh, hysteresis controller. So we will not be talking about that one now. Now we will go to another popular, very popular PWM control that is called the space vector PWM control. See, so far we talked about the PWM control based on the individual phases. Now at the end of uh, current history controller, we talked about the combined effect and we call the combined vector from the all the three phases. Okay. So now hereafter we will talk about not as individual, as a combined effect of three phases, that is as one vector, Th that one vector which is, uh, which is the combination from all the three phases and based on that one combined effect, how you do the uh, PWM control, this is called space vector PWM control. So before coming to the space vector PWM control, let us study what do you mean by space vector, what is in literature, what do you mean by space vector, uh, how the concept has arise. So in many of the uh, latest literature, PWM control literature, people always talk about space vector PWM control. They do not talk about individual uh, phases, but instead of the combined effect, space vector PWM control. It is very important, very interesting. So let us call space vector space vector based PWM control, PWM technique. Or in literature it is called SVPWM, space vector PWM. What is mean by a space vector? Let us see. Now we are going to consider the voltage and current variation in a machine, let us talk a three phase system, let us take a uh, machine like induction machine as not as individual APC, combined effect of all the three. See com what is mean by combined effect of all the three? Let us say take schematic representation of our, this is our A phase, B phase, the B phase winding what I am seeing in a machine, this is B phase and the C phase. This is C phase. This the assuming resistance is negligible. So this is the basic three phase uh, representation of a machine. Okay, with the back EMF load is also there. Back EMF is there. We can put this one. Okay. Now, in all our PWM control, what we want, we are using PWM technique for voltage control. But what is the Final thing one want, the final uh, target is sinusoidal variation, nearly sinusoidal variation of the current, okay, that is what we want. Let us say, let us study, when the machine is excited with three sinusoidal currents, so this is our A phase, now B phase, I will draw with a different color. 120 degree. This is our B phase, approximate. 
then and let us draw our C phase. This is our ABC current, this is our omega t. Let us see when the machine is excited with three sinusoidal currents. Let us take what happened the, the MMF or the flux generated in the inside the machine. Let us take our omega t is equal to 0 here when A phase is maximum. So, here when A phase is maximum, we know that I A plus I B plus I C is equal to 0. When A phase is maximum, the flux along the A phase or the or the MMF, MMF flux along the A phase is equal to that is N into I is equal to flux into reluctance of the path, okay. So, this is called the MMF. So, MMF Ni is proportional to the flux, okay. Reluctance of the machine is uniform, it is not varying. So, what we can write the Ni is proportional to the flux generated in the machine or the flux density you can say Fc is equal to B flux density into area. So, mm of Ni is proportional to our flux density. Let us say flux density that is the number of lines per unit area. So, as the current is maximum the flux density the number of lines per unit area will increase. Let us say, so if you see the flux density is proportional to I. Now, when A is maximum the flux density let us say N i is in this direction, this for the A phase. What will happen here omega t is equal to 0, when omega t is equal to 0 that is this point sorry I have taken this is omega t is equal to 0. At this point B and C are equal and negative and half the value then only we can I a plus I b plus I c equal to 0. So, the flux or the flux density the flux is along in this direction, B is minus, C is also minus. So, B it will be in this uh, half the value. So, if this is take the amplitude as uh, 1, this will have the half the value, but it and C will be minus, so it will be in this direction. So, so where will you have the peak fl uh, fl uh, fl uh, flux density wave in the machine? So, you will we will take the component along in this direction, component along in this direction it will cancel. So, the component along in this direction will be parallel to this one, then this also parallel to this one. So, it will go like this, okay. So, this one this is 60 degree, this is 60 degree. So, if you see here this is if this is phi these two will be together will const, uh, constitute phi by 2. So, totally it will be 3 by 2 phi in this direction because already this is phi by 2 and cos 60 half. So, half into half 1 fourth here also half into 1 fourth 1 fourth 1 fourth plus half. So, 3 by 2 phi the maximum flux at that flux density direction that will be along the FIS axis. Now, let us take a case where at this point here when B is maximum sorry when B is maximum that is at this point not this point. So, let us draw now when B is maximum that is at this point. At this point if you see current through the B phase is maximum and C and A is negative and half the value. So, if you see according to the same explanation here, now the max 3 by 2 phi will be along in this direction 3 by 2 phi, okay. Now, again when C is maximum, the 3 by 2 phi, 
here a and b are negative c is maximum the 3 by 2 phi will be in this direction. No, if we try to plot the the maximum the direction along the maximum flux, uh, flux, uh, flux density axis starting from here taking various point in this curve. So, the maximum flux density wave will trace a circle. What it shows for sinusoidal excitation when the machine is excited with the sinusoidal current the maximum flux density wave a sinusoidal distribution of the flux is possible inside the machine and the peak value of the flux as the speed moves depends on the it will trace a circle inside the machine that is we want during. So, so this will trace a circle the resultant flux density wave. So, if you see here for the analysis this is generated from our three phase system. So, this circle is generated can also be generated by an equivalent two phase system. Let us have our equivalent two phase system, we do not work a three phase system. The same circle here it represents the flux distribution, sinusoidal flux distribution and it traces as the uh, frequency varies the peak value traces a circle. This can all this is generated by a three phase, it can also generate by a two phase system. Let us see this is two phase system alpha and beta. Okay. Let us say this is n, this is also n, same number of times. Okay. Then let us see what is this component, the current component along this i alpha and b beta, b, b beta such that it will also generate a flux distribution like this circular flux distribution as the fundamental frequency varies. That is this is simple the three phase to two phase transformation. So, let us derive that one. See the real and imaginary part let us take n into i alpha that is mmf along the alpha axis that means again for clarity we will make it like this. This is a 120 degree you have b this is c a b c. Now, you have alpha beta. So, number of times is what is Ni alpha? Ni alpha is the component of the MMF along the ABC axis. See the component of the ABC axis along the alpha axis. So, the component along these are in the along the same phase, direction is the same, that are they are collinear. So, the component along the A phase which contribute to alpha axis is equal to same as n into IAT. See, IA is sinusoidal varying, so that is a function of time. Now, what is the MMF produced by the B which contribute to the alpha axis? So, this will be 120 degree, cos 120 degree. So, n into I beta t into cos 120 degree. whatever the component along the C, C will be cos 240 that is this way 240 degree, this is 120 degree. So, this we can write number of times is the same and the MMF or the flux density wave depends on the instantaneous value of current and the component along the alpha axis is equal to cos 120. Okay. So, from this one we can say the equivalent current I alpha is equal to I A T plus I B T cos 120 degree plus I C T into cos 240 degree. Okay.
So, I C T is 240, this is the alpha component, alpha. Now, let us take the beta axis, beta axis is this is 90 degree. So, I A will not contribute along to the beta axis, only I B and I C. So, I B and I C if you see here this is the beta axis, I B is along this one and I C is along this one. This is 90, so this has to be 30 degree. So, I C this is minus I C, this is I B, this also will make 30 degree here. So, beta axis the component MMF will be I B n, n into I beta the MMF which is proportional to the flux density wave or the uh, peak value of the flux depending on the I B, flux density wave I B n into I beta will be I A the flux along the A axis will not contribute. So, this will be n into I B T into I beta how much it will come? We can either write from here to here cross 30 we can write it ok, but from this 120 240 uh, same thing if you use it this is also can be I beta into sin 120, it will be sin 120 degree and plus end into I C T into sin 240 degree this will be like this ok. Here I beta from this one I beta is equal to this I beta is also function of time it is varying as the I A I B varies I beta T also varies this will be equal to I beta T into sin 120 degree plus I C T into sin 240 degree. Okay. So, at any instant the resultant peak value of the flux that the maximum flux density wave will be will apply to find out where in the machine it will be there we have to vector some the flux density wave or MMF along the alpha and beta. So, let us take n into I alpha t beta is along the I alpha plus J beta. So, here this way. So, this amplitude will let us go to the next page the N I alpha T plus the this N I alpha along this di direction and beta T in this direction. So, this amplitude will vary as the beta varies not as the I I I I, I B I C amplitude varies. So, at any instant this component is the vector sum of these two orthogonal components that means it can represent n in plus n into plus j into n. So, j is introduced it is a vector sum. This also we can write as n into i alpha t plus j i beta t. So, this I alpha plus if I alpha is here, I beta is here, let us take this as I s. So, this will be equal to n into I s. So, to show that this is a vector, I will put an underscore. That means, it has a magnitude as well as an angle the theta that depends on the instantaneous amplitude of I alpha and beta. So, I alpha I beta varies as I told this one, trace a circle or our N i s if it our N i alpha N i beta N i beta depending on this value this will raise a circle ok. What it will raise a circle our N into i s that is the resultant flux. So, we know that in the machine the peak value of the flux the maximum flux density wave will trace a circle with the constant amplitude. 
when you excite with sinusoidal current. So, this we can call as flux space phasor or space vector, flux space vector because it is, it exists inside the machine and it has an angle, it is not, not like our conventional vector, this is a fixed angle, this is a function of angle theta t. Now, this flux space phasor, if you say it is produced by the current space phasor, uh, yes. So, if you remove this constant, what is our current space vector equivalent ma that mathematical expression, current space vector, current space vector, but this is vector exists in the space, but this is if you remove the constant, we can also, also have an equivalent current space vector definition is equal to I alpha plus J I beta, okay. If you see here, this I s, this one quantity, it is a sum of real and imaginary which in turn are produced by the individual A B C currents. So, this can also be represent us as an I s magnitude and some e raised to j if the speed is theta t, the frequency is the omega s, omega s into t. This is the angle, theta is this angle. So, this is called the current space vector. Now, if you see here, the current space vector is generated, current is generated by sinusoidal current means it is by sinusoidal voltage individual phases which are with a phase angle phi for a induction machine for a current will be always lagging. So, we can also have an equivalent, we can also have an equivalent voltage space vector representation that is V s is equal to V alpha plus J V beta is equal to V s magnitude into E raised to J omega s t plus some phi with respect to current. So, what is the advantage here? The all the three variations we represented with two quantities, one is the magnitude and other one is the angle. This is called the polar representation. So, what it indicates? For a sinusoidal flux variation, we should have a sinusoidal uh, current variation. Now, in PWM operation using when you have the PW operation, the average variation is circular. So, that means average variation of the current is circular or in turn we should have a PWM scheme such that the combined effect of all the three with respect to all the voltage space vector, the tip of the voltage space vector should have an average variation tracing a circle with uniform velocity. So, the space vector PWM aims at having a uh, voltage space vector. The average variation of the space vector, the tip of the uh, vector should trace a circle with the uniform velocity equal to our input excitation frequency. So, that how to generate this uh, space vector, voltage space vector PWM, so that the resultant voltage space vector or the average variation of the voltage vector will trace as a circle, we will study in the next class.